Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, AI has the potential to revolutionize the way wars are fought and won, but it also poses significant risks and challenges. To prevent abuses, we need to establish international guidelines. It is crucial that we take action now. Ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't me who wrote these words, nor was it my speechwriter. It was Chat GPT. And it generated these three sentences literally in a split second, faster than you and I can write, speak, or think. And this actually shows me the tremendous potential of AI, but also the potential of our combined wisdom. Because that is what ChatGPT delivered, a combination of the thoughts, knowledge, and expertise it was fed. And it gives me hope that we can take action today and tomorrow. With the wisdom that is right in front of me in this room, of military experts, academia, civil society, and government officials. And your expertise, ladies and gentlemen, is very much needed. Because AI might soon exceed our combined knowledge. AI is everywhere. It is in our children's phones, where ChatGPT is their new best friend when homework is concerned. It is changing the way we live. It's changing the way we work. And it is clearly changing the military. It has been estimated that AI is as groundbreaking as nuclear technology, and that it has huge, huge potential. Just imagine, just imagine a missile hitting an apartment building. In a split second, AI can detect its impact and indicate where survivors might be located. Even more impressively, AI could have intercepted the missile in the first place. Yet AI also has the potential to destroy within seconds. And that is worrying, considering that over the past decades only prudence has prevented nuclear escalation. How will this, how will this develop with technology then that can actually make decisions faster than any of us can think? As Henry Kissinger and Eric Smith observed in their book, The Age of AI, unless care is taken to develop a common concept of limits, the compulsion to act first may overwhelm the need to act wisely. And that is just one of the complexities we must take into account in the coming days when we discuss the technology's full scope from drone swarms to intel and to surveillance. Together, we must seek common ground on the definition of these technologies, starting with two actually quite basic questions. What is AI? And who is responsible for its actions? And we need to answer these questions before we can set common standards, and before we can allocate responsibilities and agree on tools that mitigate risks. And unlike nuclear weapons, AI has not been unleashed on the battlefield. And you could say that gives us time. Just look at the past. At the ban of expanding dum dum bullets that left victims with horrific wounds. The prohibition of biological and chemical weapons. And a treaty to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons. These are clearly agreements that shaped our future but unfortunately were a necessary response to events that could not be undone. They, devo they developed, they followed the development of new weapons, the chemical and nuclear arm arms race, countless victims, and inexplicable cruelty. Today, we together have the opportunity to preempt a similar future, but we must act fast. In Ukraine, 
we are unfortunately already witnessing the influence of new technology, including drones and cyber attacks. And we're also witnessing how Russia is violating international humanitarian law in the most gruesome way. Today, we together have the opportunity to expand and fortify the international legal order and prevent it from breaking down. And I am convinced, I am convinced that we can truly make a difference here today and tomorrow in The Hague. Just like our predecessors did in 1899 and 1907, when they laid the groundwork for a new international system based on the law. Today, we can build on that effort. We all together can build on that effort and make it fit for the 21st century. By ensuring the responsible development, deployment and use of AI in the military domain within the parameters of international law. I very much look forward to your contributions in the coming days and I wish you a great conference. Thank you very much.